Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Now I'm popping in. I'm still out of town. <laughs> it was a couple of people who, you know, from the area, and it was like, where you staying at? I was, I was standing over such such. Like, uh, uh that uh, that really ain't the best area. I was like, yeah, but gotta be close to where my son training at. You know, he's doing a, you know, a little training and a little experience, and so gotta do what I got to do. <laughs> but. I wanted to pop on here because as I was looking online, sometimes y'all send me these videos and I look at one and then I scroll to the next one. And one of the things I noticed, and I don't know if a lot of women pick this up, I don't know if a lot of men pick this up either, but one thing you have to be careful of when it comes down to listening to men is you never want to listen to a man that is dressed like a character. So if a man gets too far out of just like the normal, the natural type of look and outfit, you you got to be careful. If he out talking and giving advice, a lot of times the men who are the most insecure and the most lost, they get like some some knowledge from somewhere or they get like they hear stuff they learn stuff and they regurgitate it and they learn this stuff because they searching for themselves but what happens is they don't feel secure enough to spread that knowledge or so-called wisdom perceived wisdom they don't feel comfortable spreading it as themselves so they put on like a cartoonish type character and I was looking at a video and it was uh, it was a guy and he had like the the plaits where it's like the, you take the two and you just twist them old twist them I don't know what you would call it and it's hanging down and then had a headband and then he had on dark sunglasses and he was sitting there talking on a podcast to women and it just was the lame and he had a beard you know had to grow his beard out it just was the lamest thing in the world it was like he seen, he felt like, okay, if I grow this thick beard, if I do my hair like the rappers, put my headband on, put me on dark, dark sunglasses sitting inside. You're not doing a podcast outside in the sun, sitting inside with dark, dark sunglasses on that, oh yeah, this going to be cool. This, this right here, vibe right here, this cool. And then just going back and forth with women about stuff. And... Then I seen a video, and it was a guy, and he had on, like, a ring on every finger. And he had on, like, an interesting hat and, like, a funny hat, funny outfit. And a lot of times we'll call this stuff, like, style or whatever, but really what it is, nine out of ten times, there, there may be an exception to the rule, like there, there may be an exception to the rule, but a lot of times what it is, is it's men who grew up and they were overlooked or they were picked on or bullied or they were mistreated by women or kind of not in the in crowd with the guys. And so as they are left to themselves they start to gravitate toward like what is cool, like what is cool, what what out here is cool, and they start looking for what's cool. And when they home, they watching BET, MTV Live, or One Hundred Six in Park, you, stuff like that. Growing up, and then whatever show it is, and then they see all these different characters. Whereas when you are artist. You kind of have to be a character. So they see these different characters and they see these different looks and outfits and different types of things that look cool, so to speak. And so they emulate that. And then when they get online, they go to sharing all this stuff. But for a large part of the day, a lot of men are hiding. They're hiding behind their insecurities and they're hiding in some type of outfit, some type of uniform where they don't want you to see them. They don't want you to know 
who who they really are. And so they hide behind this because it's a certain type of, they feel like, okay, if I look a certain way, I'm going to get more attention. And that's always a red flag. You have to be careful with that because although the person may have some knowledge or some wisdom, if they're not where they should be in their own self-worth, in their own self-image and how they view themselves and if they feel like they have to be something else or create an alter ego or some type of other thing or person to get a message out, disseminate a message mass across people, the, across the world, that's where you have to realize like, okay, what is going on and have you found you? And I say that to say, it's kind of like, I might do a video in my Sprinter and sometimes people ask me like, where are you at? Why does this thing look like a spaceship? But then at the same time, I do a video with the headboard behind me and this picture that's not really in a frame. It just got a frame around it in an Airbnb that's in a, not this not like a lower class neighborhood. I feel like maybe it's like middle class and cause it's Range Rovers and stuff and BMWs and people drive away, but it's just a expensive whole city or whatever. But the thing about it is, is sometimes you'll notice people online, they can't let you see them regular. They can't just turn on the camera in in a room or living room. They have to be on a stage. They got to be in a studio. They got to be always polished, always produced, always dressed up as real, dressed up real nice or always a character. And so you never really get to see them in a raw essence, in a just bare state. And the reason being is because of what they're hiding. And they don't really feel like or believe that they truly have it, the purpose, the message. And so you have to be very careful. So it's kind of like a woman, if you see a woman who she'll do a video with no makeup on, especially if she's an advice giver, like she might have a little foundation or whatever. I ain't saying not to look presentable, but if, and I'm not saying you should do this, but a woman who will do that, now she's showing you that she's not afraid to be judged. She's not afraid to be looked down on. She's not afraid. She is for who she is for. And even the people who support her still be like, ooh, that's what your face look like without that makeup? Ooh. And some people will put in the comments, oh, yeah, yeah um, you should try this. But she like, okay, cool. <clears throat> you know, I, I got on here and I ain't got my normal face routine. I was trying to pack light. So I done got my, a bump on my forehead. And it's like they're talking to me. And my daddy used to tease me growing up. He's like, oh, I see you got your love Mount Everest up there. And stuff like that. But it's like, I was about to put on the hat. But I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like putting on the hat. Sitting down in right here. So just got to come natural. And that's, I'm going to be honest with you, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. And it's something that I don't want to do. But it's something that. I was forced to do because I said, you know, I want to be real. I want to be authentic. I want to be, I, I was just, I seen a message. I ain't blocked the lady. I just deleted it and put it where she can't send me no more messages. And she was telling me about this man who take care of stray dogs with his money. But she's seeing it online. And I'm like, okay, you telling me about he take care of stray dogs and then she was saying, I have nice things. And she don't think that it's of Christ for me to have nice things. Or I don't know what she was talking about, Tiffany box or whatever. I don't know how maybe she, how my wife dress or whatever. But I'm like, okay, 
the man taking care of dogs when it's people who ain't getting to eat. So he feeding all these dogs and he feeding dogs fresh food. These are dogs. So what is he doing? That's it. It's like, and you don't know what I do. God bless me to where I could be a blessing to people to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and still be blessed because the blessings of God come to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. But it's just perception. And that's the thing was you have to have discernment so that you can see through what people are showing you because people will portray what they want you to perceive. But if you don't have discretion and discernment, then you won't understand that the perception is just your reality. That doesn't mean that's who they are. So I want you, I want to tell you this, be very careful out here when you listening to people. And because people could sound good and be doing all this. And this one thing I think about a lot of times when it comes to this, I think about, I say, okay, I can have all this wisdom, all this knowledge. I could be given all this right here. But if somebody in real life is not getting to benefit from what I'm talking about, meaning if the way I'm dealing with them is the opposite of what I'm doing, and I remember when I first started doing this, you like giving insight, sharing advice. One day I started because I wrote a book because that was my gift and it kind of started to catch on. And I remember one time my wife said to me, she said, you don't treat me like you talk about in your work or whatever. And now at the time I'm like, I thought I was perfect. Like I'm I'm like, I ain't know what she was talking about, but she's not a communicator. She don't really my wife has never ever in our marriage once said we need to talk. I've never heard those words. But it's because she's a product of her environment. Her mom is not a communicator. Her dad is not a communicator. They're Jamaican. So that culture is very like strong and very resilient, so to speak, very, could be arrogant almost sometimes, or it could be seen as arrogance, but it's just very like self-sufficient in certain segments, you know, certain, her family specifically. I know, I know it's probably some people who, you know, beg or steal, borrow, do it, whatever, but my wife, she wasn't like that in the sense of just, she never yell. She's never cursed at me. She never said we need to talk. She never, and it, and it doesn't mean that I've been perfect. Some people say, oh, that's because she ain't got to. That's because she got a good man. No, I'm a man. So I had to learn and grow like any other man. But when she said that, I was like, what does she mean by that? And I, it could have meant like at that time, I felt like it was, I was so consumed with work. I was so focused on work and I probably was, between 23, 26 years old, I'm still learning, growing. But then even after that, I still had to learn and grow. And so I had to come to a place and I said, you know what? <laughs> it means nothing if I help a million people if the one person, if there's a person closest to me that does not get to see me the way the world sees me. Like if a person who knows me could say, I'm not a good person or I'm not a real person or a true person, an honest person, a faithful person, and a million people life is better because of mine, I failed at my mission if I hurt those closest to me. My point is, is there are a lot of men who are talking and they're helping a lot of people, but behind closed doors, the people that's closest to them are being hurt and they don't know the version of them that the world knows. And the reason why I know this is because I went through it. So I know everybody goes through it because we're all human. So you have to be careful when you put people on a pedestal and you praising people 
because you don't know who they are behind closed doors and who's being hurt behind, by them behind closed doors. Hey, just some food for thought. Tony Gasson, God bless you. I'll be back.